want to know if you have noticed the thread that is running through every aspect of our service this morning, and it's speaking to light. And so it is my pleasure this morning to invite to the podium our pastor, our beloved Reverend John Scott, a bearer of light himself. Reverend John, please come to the podium. Good morning, family. Good morning. And it is appropriate that we are celebrating the light because I can just see it streaming from your heart centers and filling this sanctuary. And I believe it emanates from this place to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate everyone whom it touches. I see it filling this island and beyond our shores, the Caribbean, and beyond that, the entire cosmos as the waters fill the sea. So welcome, welcome to my heart, welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. Thank you for choosing this absolutely beautiful day to be with us in this beautiful place. God bless you all, and we extend that blessing to all who join us on the World Wide Web. A friend emailed me an amusing version of the origins of the computer, and I thought I'd share it with you this morning. In ancient Israel, it came to pass that a trader by the name of Abraham Com did take unto himself a young wife by the name of Dot. Now Dot Com was a comely woman, broad of shoulder and long of leg. Indeed, she had been called Amazon Dot. She said unto her husband, Darling, why dost thou travel far from town to town with thy goods, when thou can trade without ever leaving thy tent? And Abraham did look at her as though she were several saddlebags short of a camel load, and simply said, How dare? And Dot replied, I will place drums in all towns and drums in between to send messages saying that you have for sale and what you have for sale, and they will re reply telling you what they want. Abraham thought long and decided he would let Dot have her away with the drums. The drums rang out, and there were an immediate sellout success. As we say in Jamaica, it's sell off. Abraham said that he had sold all the goods and he had top price for his, for his merchandise without ever moving from his tent. But this success did arouse envy. A man named Maccabeer did secrete himself inside Abraham's drum and was accused of insider trading. <laughs> and the young man did take to dot coms trading as doth the greedy horsefly take to horse flesh. And before long, there were many others, and they were called nomadic, ecclesiastical, rich, Dominican siderites, nerds for short. <laughs> and lo, the land was so feverish with joy at the new riches and the deafening sound of the drums that no one noticed that the real riches were going to the drum maker, one brother, William of Gates, <laughs> who bought every drum company in the land and indeed did insist on making drums that would only work with brother Gates drum heads and drum sticks. <laughs> Dot said, oh Abraham, what we started is being taken over by others. And as Abraham looked out over the Bay of Ezekiel, or as it came to be known, eBay, <laughs> he said, and I quote, we need a name that reflects what we are. And Dot replied, young, ambitious, Hebrew owner operators, Yahoo, <laughs> said Abraham. And that is how it all began. It wasn't Al Gore after all. But seriously speaking, friends, dot com really has changed the way we do business, hasn't it? And indeed, the way we live our lives. In fact, the glasses I'm wearing this morning were bought online. I have no idea where they were made. I only know that you log on to a site and you can 
you could scroll through thousands of options of different styles of glasses. And you can even try them on. You upload a picture of yourself, and when you choose a pair that you like, you press try on, and there, ta-da, there's, your, your picture is shown wearing the glasses. Nice, eh? Even better, I want you to know that these glasses cost 133 US dollars, and a similar pair bought at a fashionable upper scale eyewear center here in Jamaica would have cost me almost $200,000. So it suits us to shop around. And if you're one of those, like I used to be, who is nervous about uh, .com, get to know her. She can really work for you. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to share a little bit this morning about .com and how it works for us. There's a, a, an author called um, Barbara Holt, and I came across the term she used in a December 1997 Science of Mind magazine. Uh, do, do all of you save your magazines and find you have years and years? Sometimes you have to be really st stern with yourself and say, you know, what are you doing with you know, magazines from the year of ought? But I had this one from 1997, and in it, writer Barbara Holt talked about how she discovered uh, this teaching uh, known as the science of mind. She tells a story that her sister was ill, and so she had volunteered, as we would do as a good fa family member, to go shopping for her sis. But the sister insisted that she go to her store, her, the sister's store. And you know how that is. When you go to your own supermarket, you know where everything is. At least I used to until they change it up. Uh, but you can, you can just whiz around your own supermarket and find the things you want. But for some reason, she decided to go along with her sister's wishes, and she went to her sister's supermarket. And of course, it took her far too long to locate the items. And then she found herself in a, a very long line at the checkout counter. And so fuming you know, as, as, as we are wont to do, that A, she had allowed herself to be persuaded to go to the wrong supermarket. Um, she wandered over to the, the magazine stand to find something to read in the line. I'm going to suggest it to my supermarket. They need to have a magazine stand nearby because they have an express counter, and the only thing express about it is it gives you time to express yourself. <laughs> so Holt went over to there, and there, right amidst um, tabloids are of, about aliens landing in, in, on Earth and who was married to whom and, you know, um, what royal dresses look like, was a Science of Mind magazine. And so she picked it up, and standing in the line, she began reading. And there was uh, an article by Science of Mind founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, titled, tuning in to universal mind. As she put it, and I quote, by the time I reached the cash register, I knew that this experience was no accident. My first purchase was the issue of Science of Mind magazine, the food for thought that was my real purpose for going to that particular store that day. Isn't that wonderful how life does that to you? You have a need and a book drops off a shelf, or a friend calls and invites you to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living just the day that you needed it. Uh, it works every time. It's as if the universe really knows what we are needing and will provide it if we we'll simply allow it to provide it. So Holt, who was at the time struggling to get out of an abusive relationship, tells how right there in the grocery store, she fairly devoured the idea that she could take control of her own thoughts and in doing so, take control of her own life. And that her happiness was not dependent on somebody or something else. Her happiness had to be an inside job and she could start working on it right there and right then in that grocery store. So we can truly say, my friend, that she learned in the blink of an eye that mind matters. And that we are constantly, just as we send emails, we are sending t-mails, thought mails to the universe that actually accepts them 
and acts upon them the minute that we send those thoughts out. One of the mind techniques that Holt utilized was to create mental images or visualizations that helped her to take charge of her thoughts. Let me give you an, a, 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 an illustration of how you can do this. Just imagine for a moment, um, if you want, you can gently close your eyes if it's comfortable for you. Just imagine that you are standing by the sea on a beautiful day. That's easy to do if you live in beautiful Jamaica. And beside you is a large biodegradable trash bag. Dump into that bag any unwanted thoughts, conditions, or habits that no longer serve you. In your mind's eye, see yourself stuffing in the things like fear, doubt, lack and limitation, resentment, and anger. Now securely, tie the bag shut. And imagine that there is a fisherman in a little canoe near the shore. Toss the bag to him and ask him to take it out to deep sea and dump it for you. Ridding you of those unwanted issues forever. I know it's your mind and your imagination, so you can do with it what you like. Watch as the canoe heads out to sea, bobbing up and down on the waves. And the farther away it goes, the smaller it gets, and the freer and more relieved you feel. Until it is just a tiny dot on the horizon. And just to be environmentally sensitive and prevent any pollution of our beautiful Caribbean, know that the bag and its contents completely dissolve underwater. And so you are free forever of those unwanted habits or thoughts or beliefs. And for those of you who are into computers, you can employ this high-tech approach on the computer screen of your mind. On the screen of your mind, bring up the negatives as files to be deleted. And there's something that's interesting that happens both with the human mind and with computers. When you press delete, a little box pop pops up that asks you, are you sure? You know why? So often we say we want to be rid of things, but we don't really. It's, it's quite amazing. We say we want out of a situation, but we kind of hang on to it, don't we, a lot of times. And I believe that is why the beautiful Jesus, the Christ, invariably asked people before he healed them, do you want to be healed? It's a very important question, you know, my friends. And perhaps the most beautiful story for me, anyhow, um, that illustrates this is the story of the man at the pool of Bethesda. Do you remember that story? The story is that he had, he had been there for many, many years. And Jesus seeing him, I think it's in Matthew, uh, Jesus seeing him, um, knowing that he had been there in that situation, in that condition for a long time, asked him, do you want to be healed? Now, my friends, if I had been sick for a long time and somebody said, do you want to be healed? My first thing would be, yes, oh God, yes, yes, yes. But what did he say? I don't have anybody to pull me into the water when the, when the angel disturbs it. Before I can, I, I can get down there, somebody else jumps in ahead of me. What a lucky thing Jesus wasn't like some of us. I just said, and sit down there then. <laughs> but, so that, when you pull up that delete, sign and the little box comes up. When you press delete and that little box comes up, really say, do I want to be rid of this? And if you do, press delete and watch it disappear and just allow yourself to feel the exhilaration of complete freedom from something that maybe has held you for many, many years. And because our minds are stubborn, sometimes that feeling may come up again. Just go back into the computer screen in your mind and delete it again. Do it until you really feel a sense of release. 
With persistent practice, my friends, you will find that before long, you will have more positive mental files. But there's something important to remember, and it is this. When you get rid of something, you create a vacuum, eh? And nature abhors a vacuum. So be sure that you fill it with the, po with, with the opposite, the, something positive, something that you really want. Because otherwise, more junk gets, gets back into the files. So you need to defragment. <laughs> you need to clean your files regularly and to be sure to put into that computer, which is your subconscious mind, those feelings, those attitudes, those experiences that you really want in your life and in your affairs. And so your assignment, and regulars at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living know I always give an assignment. Your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is first and foremost to use either of those two techniques I shared with you, sailing away, tossing your, your, your biodegradable garbage bag full of unwanted uh, thoughts, lack and limitation, and uh, I'm not good enough, and what if, and I should have, and uh, I could have, all of that, t tossing it to a little man in a canoe and having him sail it out to deep sea and dispose of it for you. Or bring it up on the computer screen of your mind and press delete there, and be sure to then create some files that, that contain the experiences that you want. Uh, you know, I just had a, a, an email through our website from, from someone who was asking for prayer. And her prayer request was like a laundry list of all the things that bothered her in her life. Her lack of funds, her unsuccessful relationship, her, the job that she doesn't like. I mean, just a litany of don't wants. You notice that most people know what they don't want? but ask them what they want, and they're, they're hard-pressed to tell you. And so um, she said, well, would we take it to the Lord in prayer? And we know that what you take to the Lord, that really means the law. What you put into the law becomes your experience, because God is so good that God cannot say no to anything that you are, are requesting. And if you are constantly focused on what you don't want, God says yes. The universe says yes. It looks like that's what you want, and here is more of it. Um, it will fill your, fill your life with, with the unwanted experiences. Fortunately, there's an option on the, on the website that people can, can leave their email address if they want, and she opted for that, so I was able to reply to her with an explanation of that business of taking it to the Lord in prayer. Only take what you want. So when you are creating your files on the computer of your mind of the stuff that you do want, then you will be creating AbundantMoneySupply.com. You'll be creating SuccessfulWeddingPlans.com or SuccessfulJobInterviews.com or uh, create what it is you want to experience. Deal? Two people said yes. The other assignment is to join us on Ash Wednesday for that day of prayer and to spend a little time perhaps during one of the workshops being um, uh, uh, live streamed from our virtual conference uh, from Centers of Spiritual Living in Colorado. So friends, I want you to know that this week is going to be an important week beginning on Ash Wednesday because traditionally Lent is a time when, when uh, in, in Orthodox religion, people give up stuff. So I want us to have a mind fast during Lent, fasting from negative thoughts, and a soul feast, feasting on the good that we know God is in our lives and in our affairs. Let us affirm together, all things work for good in my life, for God is good. Can we say that? All things work for good in my life, for God is good. Since T-mail, or thought mail if you prefer, is a way of treating yourself to positive thoughts, you may think of it as an affirmative prayer. That is, 
uh, what we call spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer here at the temple. And in both our Tuesday and our Thursday classes, uh, I am teaching it in spiritual economics on a, on a Tuesday night, and Reverend Ann and Reverend Sonia are also dealing with, with the technique of treatment in their class on a Thursday evening. And so I want you to just give yourself the gift of attending even one class. Sometimes out of a whole series of classes, the one that you attend is the one that you need it to be. Just like that woman Holt who went to the wrong supermarket, which turned out to be the right place for her to find the answers to her, the, the things in her life that were important and were pressing for her. Let us affirm, today I delete everything unlike God, unlike good. Together, today I delete everything unlike God and unlike good. My every thought bears witness to the truth of my being. My every thought bears witness to the truth of my being. I am pure spirit. I am holy, whole, and perfect. I am pure spirit. I am holy, whole, and perfect. To your neighbor say, you are pure spirit. You are holy, whole, and perfect. Namaste. You are pure spirit. You are holy, whole, and perfect. You are pure spirit. You are holy, whole, and perfect. So friends, I said your neighbor, not everybody in the church. There is no need to Google God, for God is right where you are, closer than your neck vein. You do not need to beat the drums of .com to communicate with universal mind, because it receives your T-mail the nanosecond you think it. And the server is your subconscious mind. It will faithfully reproduce what you, what you send it. So ensure that your T-mails are messages that matter, that make life worthwhile, that uplift and bless and, and inspire others, and that touch people with the beauty of their own inner light, their own loveliness, their own goodness as daughters and sons of God. Lock onto the computer of your mind, delete anything that is unlike God, and know that you are pure spirit. You are truly holy, whole, and perfect. Namaste.